Hi, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be looking at a plate-to-plate -plate welded connection. So it's a fairly, fairly straightforward connection here. We have basically two plates um, that are welded together and are going to be loaded uh, longitudinally. Um, and what we're going to be using for this calculation is the AISC spec chapter J. Uh, we're using section J2 for the weld design and then J4 for the connecting elements design. And just uh, one thing to note here between the two editions, right, the 15th edition and the 16th edition, um, the, the output outcome or the result of these equations are the same. It's just the way that they're structured is a little bit differently now in the 16th edition. So in the 15th edition, uh, you have the nominal uh, strength of the weld is FNW times AWE. And then for the 16th, it's FNW times AWE. And then they have this new factor KDS, um, which sort of separates out the directional factor uh, based on sort of how the weld is loaded uh, compared to its uh, to its axis. So the AWE is the same for both, right? The effective area of the weld. Then for uh, FNW, the nominal stress of the weld metal. So uh, in the 15th edition, it incorporated uh, that directional factor. So that 1.0 uh, plus 0.5 sine uh, theta there. And then on the, in, in the 16th edition, the FNW is just equal to the nominal stress. So just that 0.6 um, FEXX. And then for the 16th edition, they've added this KDS value, which has that component. And so um, there's a couple different options there for, for what you're looking at when you're using the KDS, but just wanted to highlight those differences between the 15th and 16th edition when you're looking at your weld design. So let's take a look at our problem statement here. We've got two plates uh, welded to get together. Uh, we have a, a three-sided quarter-inch fillet weld. Both plates are 3 8 thick, um, 836 plates. The plate dimensions are as shown. Uh, it is axially loaded or longitudinally loaded uh, with a dead load of 35 kips and a live load of 25 kips. And we're just going to be checking to see if the connection as shown is sufficient to resist the applied loading. And we'll do this in, in LRFD. So let's go ahead and open up CalcBook and we'll get started on the design. All right, we've got CalcBook open now. So we go ahead and click into our steel design module. We can select the 15th or the 16th edition. For this problem, we'll go ahead and use the 15th edition. We'll go to our connection designs and then we'll select on our simple welded connection. Click confirm and get that loaded up. Um, okay, then we can start on the left side here and start selecting our inputs. So the first thing we're gonna switch here is that we have a three weld arrangement, right? We have three sides. So you can either do two welds, right? So just on the sort of on the each side, um, parallel welds, or you can have a three weld where you have it basically all around the, the three sides that are connecting the two plates together. So we'll click on three welds. Our overlap length, right, is gonna be 12 inches, one foot. Um, and it's a quarter inch weld, so we'll leave that at a quarter. We're going to use FEXX of 70, the, the classification strength. We actually didn't specify that, but 70 is sort of our default. Um, we're going to leave our block shear rupture at one, right? There's some more information here, but it's basically a uniform stress, so it'll be one. Um, our height of member one is going to be uh, six inches, so we'll leave that as is. We have a three eighths plate, leave that. And then we have A36. If you have something else, we do have the the table 25 from AIC, um, you know, that can help you guide or guide you to, to select the right material type for your plate. Um, for the height of member two, it is going to be one foot, and then that's also going to be three eighths, and that's also going to be A36. So we'll leave that as is. And then we want to jump over to our demand. Uh, we're going to go ahead and use the ASC 716 load combinations. Our dead load is going to be 35 kips and our live load is 25 kips. So we can already see in our uh, output window here, we're over by about 12% and we're controlled by tensile yielding of member one. So we'll take a look at that in a second here, but let's go ahead and dive into uh, the calculations. So our demand, right, it's just gonna be our 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live, gives us a total load of 82 kips. We'll check first the shear strength of our weld Right, so we have some sort of criteria here for the um, the length that we can use for our weld, and then we have the the transverse transverse length. Um, calculate our effective areas of the longitudinal welds as well as the transverse weld. Calculate our nominal stress of the weld, so that 0.6 FEXX. Um, normally, you would have the the directional factor, but because of the uh, longitudinal and transverse, it's not uh, included in this calculation. And then we also have the, the strength of the transverse, which is the same. Calculate the longitudinal nominal strength, the transverse nominal strength, and then we use equation J210 and A and B 
um, to calculate the combined loading of a longitudinal weld and a transverse weld. So they have a, a different equation here uh, for when you combine those together. Um, and we get a total com uh, combined weld strength of 222 uh, kips. So qu quite a little bit of capacity here. And then we apply our fee factor. Um, so we have 167 kips of uh, weld shear strength. So then we want to check into the other members, right? So we have to still check uh, the chapter J4 connecting elements section. So we want to check our plates to make sure that they can resist the loading, right? We already know from our output that it cannot. So we'll take a look and see what's going on here. Um, so we first calculate our gross area of member one. So just the six inches times three eighths. And that has a capacity, uh, a nominal capacity of 81 kips. Check our member two, which we know sort of by inspection is going to be greater because it's a bigger section. And then when we apply our fee factor, right, we only have a capacity of 73 kips. So that does not meet our demand of 82 kips. Um, and then we can check our block shear. This is going to be uh, quite a bit of capacity here, just considering the, the amount of steel that we have. Um, so that is not going to be a factor. But we do want to fix up our, our design here to make sure that this works. And so since, since we know that our uh, member one is has not enough uh, cross-sectional area to resist the loading, we can just go back to our capacity here. We can go down to member one, and we can just maybe make this a half inch plate um, instead of a 3 8 plate, and that should take care of it. You could also have made the plate a little bit taller, maybe add an inch or two. Um, that would also work uh, depending on your situation. So uh, that is a plate to plate welded connection in CalcBook. We hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like a 25% discount on your first month subscription of CalcBook, you can use the discount code YTCB2024. Um, and uh, we'll see you next time.